I got a text about three weeks ago when this patient came back for her four-week follow-up with the local surgeon. He says, um, the patient is a rock star. And I called him and he said she's completely asymptomatic. Now, short-term follow-up, but that's a pretty dramatic result. She was going to do well no matter what was right. done or wasn't done as long as something was done. And, I, and that, that brings up the healthy skepticism, which I think is relevant to the discussion today. We, we have to have a healthy skepticism about new product or new techniques as surgeons, <coughs> particularly out in the community, where it's our responsibility to decide for an individual patient what should be done, what shouldn't be done. And as we go through this study where there are some biases that have to be considered that aren't part of um, what are generally talked about, <clears throat> when we're in private practice and we have a patient in front of us and we're deciding what do we do, we have to be skeptical about what's out there until it's, in my opinion at least, until it's blatantly obvious that what we're recommending has stood the test of time. This, this healthy skepticism thought that I that I have somewhat developed today, but I realize it's part of the practice in general. When, when I think of incorporating a new product or procedure into what I do, um, first of all, you gotta think of Clint Eastwood, a man's got nose limitations, mm -hmm. dirty hair. <laughs> but you also have to, I think, think of the duration of use of the product or the procedure <clears throat> So that there, if you, if it's something that, and then you compare that to the risk of the procedure, the relative risk. So if something is fairly riskless to try, it's easier to incorporate it into your practice. Or if something has really been a long, around a long time and it's fairly low risk, that's very easy. But if something is fairly high risk, either going into it, such as implanting a product or getting out of it, explanting a product, if the risk is high, the longer the duration of use, the more comfortable in practice I would be to incorporate it. I have a healthy skepticism as it relates to new products, and, and this is one of those. And given a healthy skepticism, I find that for the individual patient in front of me, I will choose for that patient, like Dr. Scuderi does, that which I would want for myself or a family member, and it's going to be a cervical fusion. Although, if we find in the long run, with a longer duration of utilization and with a diminishing risk of implanting or explanting, I would convert to an arthroplasty, but I haven't gotten there yet because what we see so far is that that procedure takes longer in the operating room, therefore it's more expensive, and there's a greater blood loss, therefore it's more risky minor points, but when we're speaking to patients about what's the success rate and we tell them 98% because that's what we thought, um, we also have to tell them it's a more expensive operation, you're open longer, you're under anesthesia longer, and there's more blood loss. It is what it is. And um, so that's, that. Uh, I have an open mind, but I'll be skeptical for a little while longer.